The Old in the World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 329 Just Looking. Starlight stood in the satellite, looking down from the airship's deck as Shine Spark clunked her way past the group of admiring mares without so much as making eye contact, fretting her way into the city. She caught Willow's gaze and received a frown. She doesn't know where Ermbai's house is, does she? she asked, guessing what the mayor was thinking. Completely the wrong direction, Willow murmured, shaking her head. Oh well, we should make sure she doesn't get lost. I guess I'll get to see the rest of the ship a lot of time. Honestly, there's not all that much, Yor chuckled, letting the will tease at his oars made. There's a limited amount of things you can fit in a boat, after all. Besides, the impressive part is looking down from the air. Will she be all right on her own? Willow asked, glancing up at Betriola. Betriola watched where Shinespark had disappeared, her hood still obscuring much of her face. She should be able to take care of herself, though with her horn burnt out, I'm wondering about whether she'll be able to find her way back. I don't think she'll want to ask for directions. Valet tilted her head back and sniffed the air, showing off the other side of her chin. Yeah, good luck with that. I smell rain. Let that start up for a bit, and either she'll ask for directions, ask to hold up in someone's house, or get wet and miserable, and then do that. Besides, that air my dude, all he said we needed her if you wanted to check out that weird sword, and it's not even with us. Or important, Starlight added. If she wanted to know more about anything, there was the much easier way of listening to Fire's audio chip she had been given. It does rain here often, Willow agreed. Today and yesterday have been a lot nicer than usual. Do you have any raincoats on the ship? Dior shrugged. I wasn't in charge of packing it, but I think the idea was that it could go below decks if the weather turned bad. Worried about being caught out if a storm is coming? I can smell it too, Vitriona added, backing Valet up. Somewhat, Willow nodded, staring off at the town. Everyone in Riverfall is used to being wet, and there are rubber ponchos and towels in nearly every house. Still, I wouldn't like any of us catching a cold. White Chocolate shuddered and hugged herself. I know I'd rather wouldn't. Let's get moving then, Dior announced, making for the gangplank. A little water won't kill me, but I can't say the same for any delicate equipment I'd be bringing back from my father's lab. I know enough of the ship's schematics to at least make an educated guess at what we'll need. Besides, I'm getting eager to see the town for myself. He made it all the way to the concrete riverbank before he was swarmed by washing mares. He made it all the way to the concrete riverbank before he was swarmed by washing mares, each wearing an eager smile and happily letting him speak first. His ears folded. Can I help you? One mare fainted. Two more gave pouts of disappointment, one hoofing over a shiny trinket and a bit of candy to another, and the rest kept grinning. Dior turned back to the ship, shaking his head, his good mood and plan for the afternoon having melted into helpless confusion. Pretty sure they were here for you and not the chivalry, said smugly, folding her forelegs on the railing and resting her chin on them with a smirk. I mean, you've got that spooky coloration, mysterious past, limp that shows up when it's cold. And our dude, have you never been in a place that's like 95% mares before or something? Dior blinked back at her. Of course not. Why would... His eyes slowly widened in realization. Quick! Say something vague and edgy, but not catatonically depressing, Valet yelled, coming her hooves around the muzzle. Brag about your inner darkness or something. To love it! Several of the mares reddened immensely, one to the degree that she turned up her nose and stomped up in a huff. I was admiring the boat, she insisted. But Starlight noted that she stopped and continued to watch just before slipping out of sight. Most of the others grinned harder, a few even doing both, and some openly applauded. Matriona wore a slight frown, her wings twitching beneath her robe, as if she was trying to decide whether to swoop down and extract her son from whatever he was getting himself into. White Chocolate looked as if she was trying hard not to smile, while Willow didn't even bother to try. I... Uh, Dior lifted his hoof and stared at it, looking slightly overwhelmed. Then suddenly his voice deepened. Stay back, citizens! My inner darkness is unstable and it might hurt you if you come too close. 
Instantly, the mares collapsed in helpless laughter, some leaning against each other and others rolling on the concrete. Dio reddened and reddened harder, his great coat for once turning a lighter shade than his mane. Willow trotted over and placed a hoof at his shoulder. I think you just lost whatever chance you had of continuing in your father's hoofsteps, but will be very popular regardless. Congratulations. Starlight had to admit the oar looked silly, but not to the degree where she could join Valet or the Riverhold mares in rolling around and banging the floor. What, she asked, slightly crossed at being left out of the joke. Do they all like him that much or something? <laughs> Valet rubbed her eyes, sitting upright. Nah, I'm pretty sure he was just getting best with. These Riverfall mares are a riot. I've been watching them since we got here. Anyway, we should... <sighs> the rain didn't start gradually. Instead, it spilled over the treetops as the clouds advanced like a wall of trains, the vertical horizon blocking Starlight's view and giving her absolutely no warning. She had just enough reaction time to fire her horn and encase herself in crystal, watching as everyone else had their coats flattened and manes drenched in seconds. She felt particularly bad for not shielding white chocolate, but the mare had no experience with her magic and would probably appreciate the panic attack and being subsequently released to the rain far less than just being rained on in the first place. The mares around Dior shrieked, most racing off in various directions while trying to cover their tails and heads. A few, however, stuck around, with a prim, skinny mare loudly announcing that her house was close by. Opportunism! Ho! Valet crow, trotting happily along, her voice ringing distantly in Starlight's ears as the magical crystal muted sound and made it echo. Willow stuck right next to White Chocolate, who was still in her bathrobe, throwing Starlight a quick glance to ask if she was coming. Right. Walking would involve dropping her shield. Starlight sighed internally, embracing herself for the inevitable downpour when her shield dropped only to suddenly find herself hefted, crystal and all, carried along beneath the giant protective wing in Matriona. The Pegasus's robe looked as waterproof as the finest Riverfall poncho, and her other wing quickly covered willow and white chocolate as they followed after Valet, Dior, and the mares. End of chapter 322